Okay, hey everybody, check it out. This is the new Beta FPV Gemini Transmitter Receiver Combo. What the heck is Gemini? Basically, it's two transmitting antennas going to two receiving antennas on your quad, giving you 100% LQ all the time. Theoretically, and that's what we're going to test today. We're going to be flying up through the gauntlet trail to see exactly how the system performs as we go through that really, really thick death penetration run. And we'll compare it to my previous test that I used with just my normal one antenna, one transmitter beta FPV transmitter. As always, I'm going to be using my quad helical setup. That way it's comparable. So we have the quad helical on my HD zero goggles and the Gemini transmitter on my Zorro. I should also mention that we are flying at 100 milliwatts and 150 hertz. The telemetry packet set to one over two. And I did that to be comparable with my previous tests. I think maybe what I'll do for this test is I'll angle. Should I set them up just like this? I'll set them up just like this. See how that works. Uh, negative 60 already. Uh, smoother. We come in the one watt of uh, power. You guys gonna kill me. It was definitely better. All right, we're gonna try to fly through this digger on when it's moving. Should we do it? What? <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna get killed. That guy's gonna kill me. That's so funny. So let's just go ahead and get started. And then we'll head into the gauntlet trail now. There we go. All right. Beta FPV Gemini Express LRS. LQ is still peaked at 100. Uh, 90 for the RSSI, but still 100 LQ. Oh, there we go, a little 99 drop, but hey, what the heck? Let's go ahead and call that a huge success. So this is the gauntlet trail overview. So you can see it's pretty thick in there. A lot of trees and we came down through here let's go ahead and take a look at some previous tests that i've done with the just regular beta fpv um, transmitter and see but i'm pretty sure the lq was dropping quite a bit on those tests so let's go ahead and just take a look at that well, let's go ahead and crank it up to 1000 milliwatts of power or one watt Okay, so maybe you're wondering. <laughs> what the heck? What's that noise? Funny. I think it's a truck with a funny horn. Okay, so you're probably wondering why am I only using 100 milliwatt of power? So running at one watt is definitely better performance. It has 100% LQ all the time and the RSSI is much lower, which should be no surprise. However, there is a downside and that is running the transmitter at two watt right in front of your face is directly affecting your FPV feed. Now you can see this in the HD0 and you will see this in analog, but you might not see it in DJI or Walksnail, but don't fool yourself into thinking it's not happening. DJI and Walksnail is just covering it up, but that is in fact lowering the performance of any FPV system. And your DJI and Walksnail are then going to crash much earlier if you're getting additional interference all the time. So I wouldn't really recommend you run at one watt unless you really, really have to. However, do you have to run at one watt? If you ever get in a situation where you're going to fail safe with this Gemini system, your FPV feed has been gone for a very, very long time. So it begs to question, do you really need to use one watt ever? Personally, I will never use it. I'll probably stick to 100 milliwatt or at max 250 milliwatt. But again, if you're using a double transmitter, that's actually 200 milliwatt and 500 milliwatt. So you're gonna be using a lot of battery from your controller and you're gonna potentially be causing interference in your FPV feed. Just something to think about. Okay, so just for the record, here's how I have my antenna set up. I have one on the front here and then one on the arm sideways. And the idea is that the nulls kind of cross but this setup seems to work pretty well for everything I do. Okay, so a little bit about the Gemini transmitter here. Uh, it's this really, really nice machined metal of some sort. It feels really nice. And I think one of the reasons they used metal was actually for a heat sink because uh, there is two one watt transmitters inside this tiny little nano casing. And so this can get really, really hot. And if you're using anything over hundred milliwatts, you should probably run the fan. And even on hundred milliwatts, it does get pretty hot. Uh, the one thing I'll say, if you're testing the controller and you have the transmitter running, if you put the controller down on your desk, it's blocking this fan completely, and this will get really, really hot. So if you're testing it, doing some bench testing, I don't know, try to prop it up like this so at least you're getting some airflow. So the one thing with the metal casing is, of course, you're adding a bit of weight. If this was plastic, it would be much more lightweight. 
being metal, it does add a little bit of weight. I think it's about 60 grams. And the Zorro, of course, is kind of a lightweight transmitter, so maybe you'll notice the weight a little bit more. Additionally, since it is going to be a little bit more power hungry running two transmitters, especially if you're running at a high wattage, one watt for example, you're going to be using a lot of power and you're going to need some separate batteries because this Zorro transmitter doesn't have a whole lot of battery life. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is add an external battery pack. And once you do that, you're gonna be adding even more weight. If the weight's your concern, you might not like that. That's just a small, that's just a small con, I think. But I'm gonna continue running this transmitter for the foreseeable future, because why not? Um, as we saw in the tests here, the Gemini system is working flawlessly. It's just like a nice little backup to have, especially if you're doing any sort of high penetration situations, or if you're in a noisy environment, like a city with a lot of Wi-Fi. Is it necessary? No but I'm certainly happy to have the extra confidence and reliability that it's gonna bring. Additionally, this is really not that expensive. I think they're like 60 or 70 bucks for this transmitter and the receiver is under 20 bucks. So, I mean, you know, for 80 bucks, you got like an unstoppable system. Definitely get yourself here. I don't have an affiliate link, though I will say this receiver was sent to me by Beta FPV to test. And if this sucked, I would have told you it sucked, but the tests are the tests. Seems like incredible value for the performance you're getting. Love it.